suppose you take a disc like this. I actually have a disc. A disc. And you let it roll down an incline. Uh, and so I have an incline that uh, has an angle of theta and a height of h. And I want to find out how fast the disc is moving at the bottom. Uh, and it has a mass of m and a radius of r. Now, this problem comes up all the time in physics lab when you do the rolling physics lab. Okay, so this, this calculation is important. Let me put this down. I'm actually going to do this two different ways. I'm going to do it the easy way, and then I'm going to do it the hard way. And the hard way is just for fun. Okay. So how do we find out the speed of this uh, disc rolling down the incline uh, and it has a height of h and at an angle theta? I'm going to do another problem first. Let's imagine that it's not a disc, but it's like a, a, a frictionless block that's sliding and not rolling, sliding and not rolling. So uh, since I'm dealing with a change in position, it should trigger and say, aha, aha, I need to do the work energy principle because I'm dealing with a change in position, not a change in time. So that's what I care about. So if I use the work energy principle, work is a change in energy, the system, and I'll, I'll just call it a mass for now, the mass plus the earth. Why do we put the mass plus the earth in there? So if I don't have the earth in my system, then I'm going to need to include the work done by the gravitational force. If I include the earth in my system, then it's a potential energy. In this case, it's not too terribly difficult either way, but it's just easier. Now, I do have one force working on my system, and that's the normal force. So if I have my block right here, I do have an N right there, and it's moving this way. But remember, work is F delta R cosine theta. And so in this case, the direction of travel delta R and the force N are perpendicular. So theta is 90 degrees, so the work is zero. So there's no work done on the system. So I can write uh, work is zero is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, where kinetic energy is one half m v squared, and the gravitational potential energy is m g y. Now, if I use gravitational potential energy, I have to pick where is y equals zero, and let's just pick down here at the bottom. You don't. Have, you can pick anywhere. Anywhere will work. I just picked at the bottom. I'm going to release it from rest at the top, and I want to find its velocity at the bottom. So I have zero is k2. Let's just write it as k2 minus k1 plus u2 minus u1. Now, if I release it from rest, the initial kinetic energy, zero, and the potential energy at the bottom, zero. So that makes things easier. One half m v2 squared minus m g, the y value appears is h. Now I can solve for v2. I'm going to add that to both sides. 1 half m v2 squared equals m g h. Mass canceled. v2 is the square root of 2 g h. And that's a sliding, not rolling block. Let's put it over here because we'll, we might need that. v2 equals the square root of 2 g h. Okay. Just a little review of the work energy principle. Now, I like to say this because I see it. And this is the way to go. Zero is the change in kinetic plus change in potential. A lot of times people say, oh, the kinetic plus potential here is the kinetic plus potential down there, which is true, but it's just a, a bad, it's a bad habit to get yourself into. Because if you have work, it's just gonna mess everything up. Okay. Now, what happens if I have an object that's rolling and not slipping instead of just sliding? Well, we still have the same system. We still have no work done by the normal force. Um, technically, technically, there is a frictional force on the wheel, but it doesn't do work. It does not do work because uh, the contact point moves. It's not a, a force is always at the same contact point. It's not sliding, right? So the, the force doesn't do any work because that contact point doesn't move. I know that's kind of, but that's true. Okay, so the only difference now with this uh, 
disc rolling is that I have another kind of kinetic energy. I have rotational kinetic energy. One half I omega squared. Where I is the moment of inertia. It's a property that depends on how the mass is distributed about the object. You can look up this in a table. For a disk, it's one half m r squared. And omega is the angular velocity. So let's just redo the problem and add in that other kinetic energy term. OK, so now my work energy becomes 0, change in kinetic, plus change in potential, plus change in rotational kinetic energy. I'll put that as R. Uh, so I have 0, k2 minus k1 plus u2 minus u1 plus kr2 minus kr1. And it's just like before, the initial kinetic energy is 0, the final potential is 0, and the initial rotational kinetic energy is 0 because it's not spinning. I've released it from rest. So I get 0, 1 half mv2 squared minus mgh, still the, my, my initial potential energy is mgh, and then I have plus 1 half uh, i, I'm going to go ahead and put in i, 1 half m r squared, omega squared. Now, if the object is rolling and not slipping, then the following condition must be true, omega is v over r. That's the rolling without slipping conditioning. So if I put that in right here, I get the magic of erasers, v over r quantity squared. And I, that's equal to v squared over r squared. r squareds cancel. So now I have 1 half mv squared and 1 fourth mv squared. So this is going to be equal to 0, 1 half plus 1 fourth m v squared v2 squared minus mgh so this is just going to be 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths so i get 0 is 3 fourths m v2 squared i'm going to add that mgh to the other side mgh the mass cancels multiply by 4 thirds take the square root v2 is the square root of 4 thirds G H. Now, let's compare that to the sliding. Which one's going to be going faster? Well, I have the square root of 2 and the square root of 4 thirds. The square root of 2 is greater than the square root of 4 thirds, so it would be going slower. Okay, it has the same amount of total energy at the bottom, but it's going slower because some of that energy is in rotational motion, rotational kinetic energy. Okay. Let's put that down here. V2 is the square root of 4 thirds GH. Now, if you are getting ready for your physics lab and you want to understand this, this is what you need. If you have a sphere, what changes? Well, a sphere has a different I, so you're going to get something different than uh, 1 fourth. It's a 2 fifths MR squared, so it would be 2 fifths times 1 half, so you get a different value. So all these things have different values. Time out. If you want to bail right now, I'm not going to be offended. Okay. Because I'm going to do this a different way just for fun. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's also kind of fun. So hopefully we'll get the same thing. I'm pretty sure we will. Let's not use work energy. Because, you know, that's the great thing about physics is you can say, here's a problem and I want to do it my way. I don't want to do it the way that I've been told. And you can. There's multiple paths to victory in a physics problem. What if I draw my diagram like this? Here's my hoop, my disc. And I have the gravitational force. And then I have the normal force. And then I have a frictional force right here that makes it rotate. Can I use those forces to find the velocity at the bottom? Yes, I can. 
So let's just call this the x direction. If that's the case, first of all, the acceleration in the, um, oh wait, I actually don't even need the y direction. Okay, I'm going to write it down though anyway. So we'll call this the y direction, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So this is the angle theta. Um, and I could write that as f net y is in, and then I have a component of the gravitational force minus mg cosine theta equals zero. Okay. In the x direction, I do want that one. F net in the x direction is going to be equal to this component of the gravitational force, which is mg sine of theta, and then I have that frictional force, minus friction force, and that's equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. So I want to find that acceleration uh, in the x direction. Now there's another condition, right? There's another condition on this motion, and that's the, uh, the torque and the angular acceleration. So the torque about the center is I times the angular acceleration, where again, I is 1 half m r squared for a disk. So what forces exert a torque? Well, normal force doesn't. Actually, it should be applied down here, right? But it's pushing through the center. So the torque arm is not zero, but the angle is zero, so there's no torque. The gravitational force acts at the center of mass, so it exerts no torque. So it's just this frictional force that exerts a torque, um, and I'm going to use uh, absolute value because it's not going to matter. It technically would be a negative torque, uh, but it's fine. So the torque by this frictional force is going to be equal to the frictional force times the radius r. And that's going to be equal to uh, 1 half m r squared, that's i, and that's the angular accel acceleration alpha. But again, if the disk is rolling and not slipping, then alpha is going to be equal to a over r. That's true if it's rolling without slipping. So this is equal to 1 half m r squared a over r. And if I solve this for the frictional force, then I get the frictional force is equal to 1 half m r squared a over r squared, right? Because I have an r down there and another r right there, and the r's cancel. So I get 1 half ma. That's the frictional force. Now I can go back up here and put in my frictional force, and I can find the acceleration. So let's do that. I'm going to erase this part right here. So I have mg sine theta minus the frictional force, which is 1 half ma, is equal to ma. I know that looks weird, but that's what it is. Now I'm going to add that to both sides. I get mg sine theta is equal to 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves ma. The mass cancels. So now I know the acceleration it's going to be 2 thirds g sine theta. So I know the acceleration of the block going, or the, the, the disc going down the ramp. I just need to use the displacement, and I can use the following kinematic equation v2 squared, v1 squared, plus 2a delta x. All right, that's one of our kinematic equations, which technically is the work energy principle, but whatever. You could do it without that, technically, if you, there's another way around there. But I'm going to use that. So it starts from rest. I just need to find x. So if this is the angle theta, and that's the height h, and this is delta x, then I can say delta x sine of theta is equal to h, right? So that's my delta x is my hypotenuse. h is my opposite side. So sine times a, of theta times the hypotenuse gives me h. So delta x is... Uh, h over sine theta. Okay, so let's put everything we have. V2 squared is going to be equal to 2 times acceleration, which is 2 thirds g sine theta times delta x, which is going to be h over sine theta. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. And then I get 
2 times 2 is 4 thirds g h. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get that. Oh, looky there, it's the same thing. And that's a double thumbs up. Um, so you can do the problem either way, and it's just kind of fun to do it both ways. The end.